one minute to go. Hello, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another 3D Hangouts, the live, live edition. edition. Oh, we said it at the same time. What's up, everybody? I'm Noah Ruiz, designer here at Adafruit. Join me, Mr. Pedro. What's up, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. That's right. Okay. So we're live, and it's Wednesday. It's beautiful, 77 degrees out here in South Florida. Yep, nice March, and cloudy. March 23rd. Nice little <laughs> breeze going on. Feels okay. great. Cool. Guys, if you want to drop some stuff in the chat, we got the chat monitoring it. And uh, we're just going to jump into the show. So uh, we will have a coupon code probably later today or maybe tomorrow, mm -hmm. depending on it. But we're, we're hoping it's going to be this right here. CMYK. CMYK. Enter in that during checkout and get 10% off on everything in the Adafruit shop except gift cards and software. That's right. Um, if you spend $200 or more, you get free shipping in the US, UPS. So that's still going on. That's our little freebie deal. If you want more details, uh, adafruit.com slash free. If you're a proud resident of the NYC area, same day delivery is an option. That's right. I think you got, uh, I think time's up already at 11 a.m. Oh, that's the, the, that's the cutoff? Cutoff date to okay. get it before, I think, 5 p.m. Well, that's cool. We don't have a slide for this one, but if you see anything that is out of stock, don't forget to check our distributors. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, if you want some daily dose of uh, Adafruit, you can um, check Sign the... Sign up to the newsletter. Yes. Later. 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 <laughs> Adafruit daily. Uh, all sorts of different categories and stuff you have to opt in. And um, yeah, let's get started with the show. What are you prototyping? Let's okay. start this off. Overhead time, overhead time. What is that? Whoops. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> okay. So um, I wanted to talk about the Pie Girl, too. And I've been scouring the nets for uh, some, some better button options. So these are some rubber buttons that you may have seen on my Instagram. Uh, these are very silent rubber buttons. These are from Mauser. And the thing about them is they, and my hopes were that um, they would be a great replacement for the buttons, the tack switches that make those super loud noises. And uh, the thing about this is it doesn't have the same footprint as the, as the six millimeter buttons that we have in the shop that are sort of standard buttons. These are awesome. They have a great feel to them, but they only have two leads and they're a slightly larger. These are 7.8 millimeters by 7.8. And I was hoping, you know what? They probably will just fit. And when I aligned them up in the PCB, the gamepad PCB, everything looked okay. It wasn't exact, but um, I went ahead and did it, and you got to be a little bit careful where um, the ground planes are and, and where the traces are, but um, the thing is, because they're not perfectly lined up, they get stuck now. So now the, uh, the ninja flex, alignment, yeah. yeah, they get a little stuck, and um, it's not as, as, as playable as it is with the regular loud 6 millimeter tack switches. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a problem. I don't suggest using these buttons just yet. Um, they do work, but um, they just don't have that good feel to it. They get, they, get, they get sticky in certain situations. So we're still sourcing out and looking at other options for those buttons, but um, just wanted to give you guys an update. I'm still trying to get some good silent buttons. They, they're, it's close, but no cigar or something like that. Is that what the? So yeah, and we're still, of course, uh, waiting to get some, some components for to, to restock on the, uh, on the kits. On the yes. kit. We're waiting for batteries, amps. Just leave that there, I guess. Yeah. I think you yeah. got a clip you can roll up here. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. So here are the buttons, um, <coughs> soldering them in into the PCB. So you can see they, 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 the footprint, you have to kind of bend them in the right order. And because of that, and because of the, the, the little bit larger size of it, it's not exactly in the center. Um, the actuator isn't exactly in the center where it should be. So I think that's what's causing it to um, misalign. To misalign. And you got to be really careful where the ground planes are. So I had to reference my, uh, my Eagle CAD drawing to make sure because um, I only grounded one of the pins as opposed to maybe two of them, because it does mm -hmm. have four leads. Yeah, there's only two leads on this. Yeah, so you gotta be, I actually ended up desoldering because I just went ahead and did it. I, I followed one trace, but not the ground, and I, and I had them reversed. Mm -hmm. Not reversed, but like yeah, offset it a little bit. Yeah, cut them all off and, and did. start all over And that again. was a pain. But um, yeah, that's just the prototype, I guess, that we got going on. Mm -hmm. Trying to get some silent buttons. 
Yep. So we're on the lookout for those. Uh, you don't want to update the PCB just because what if we do find smaller ones yeah, that have that the four pins? Exactly, in the right so. footprint. A little bit um, of a waiting game here. Yep. But And I did find some on AliExpress, so I might get those too. So we'll see. All right. Um, Let's jump into layer by layer. So we've been doing a lot of, uh, like it seems like two a, two a week now. We're getting yeah. pretty close to two a week. So this week, uh, it's just been a continuation of the Pi Zero project. So here it is. Um, waiting on the PCB. Yep. <laughs> and like, sent it out. because of that, uh, we're going to be starting to expand into other areas of manufacturing, like milling our own PCBs. Yeah, milling our own PCB. So we have an other mill on order, and um, we ordered that. So hopefully, we can start prototyping. Um, some PCBs and just extra sort of elements to the 3D printing. I think they go great hand in hand, so we'll be able to do some really intricate uh, pieces mm -hmm. and um, some good experimenting there with the other yeah. mill. So different materials, nice and flat, metal, real metal. <laughs> not yeah, composite. it's going to be very handy for this uh, upcoming project you just saw a little teaser on. So you sure. took some suggestions in from the audience on moving the placement of the buttons around. Want to talk about that? Yeah, just the switch. So I moved the switch in the center because um, I didn't want it to. I, I do have it recessed now. And um, you can only see that it's it's a very, very small hole now. I still want to tweak it a bit, but uh, that's about all I did there. Um, buttons are still up here. Those are those soldier. I, I came up with some really nice methods for uh, for mounting the buttons there. Um, and um, if I press these, it'll like push in because there's no they're, they're just tacked on there with mounting tack. So that's a, you know that's about it there. And I and I opted in for screws instead because the pegs just weren't holding up really well. So I'd rather put screws here. And I also added like this sort of um, clip connector thing. You can see that there. And um, when you close it, it kind of snaps it and, and locks it in place there. So it's kind of cool. I'll talk about more of that um, in the next, uh, I guess, in the weekend or something like that when I'm doing another Lair by Lair. But uh, that's what we've been doing. I think we're up to part five now. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's it for the Lair by Lairs. Um, tune in over the weekends for that. Moving on to the Shop Talker. We're going to shop talk. We got yep. some new products and new things. Wh which one do you want to do first? Uh, we can talk about the Octoprint update. We All already right, teased guys. about the other mill, so let's see yes, we can show the website. Oh, or we can continue yeah. with other that. Other mill. Yeah. I love uh, other mill. <laughs> Octoprint. Octoprint. Yeah. So 1.2.10 update came out. Uh, Gina was trying to release this a little bit earlier, but she uh, had a little bit of a flu or got sick. Oh. And, but she finally pushed this out last week. We just couldn't get it on time for the show. And very easy, it just automatically shows your update there, and it's pretty quick on uh, setting up a lot of uh, things in the back background that it's updating, like using an MPEG uh, wrapper for doing your time lapses. Oh, that's cool. And some uh, serial, really handy. Uh, more, ha more optimized serial connection, so it doesn't disconnect from the uh, nice. your Wi-Fi network as much anymore. Great. Another thing, too, um, AstroPrint updated as well on March 3rd, I think, there's an update. So yeah. if, you, if you're using one or the other, it's a good idea to update. Mm -hmm. Another thing that also came out was the M3D FIO, the 3.0 version that came out as well. It also came out with the new firmware for the M3D. Whoa. So definitely check that out if you guys um, don't really like the software that it comes with. Okay. And uh, if you take a look at the changelog here, this actually was released, uh, I think, two versions ago, the ability to edit the profiles for this. So if you already have some G code, you have the ability to, to uh, refine the edit to that. A nice cool. little UI there. Another cool thing that you have in the calibration section here is the ability to more incrementally um, level your bed. So you have a little down button here. And oh, now nice. you can also do mid-print filament change. So nice. very handy if you want to use uh, multiple Multi -color. colors or okay. multiple uh, materials. It's, this is really expanding the feature set on the M3D. That's mm -hmm. great. Now uh, you can also save out your settings as a file uh, in case you accidentally disconnect your printer. You can load those back in without having to redo all of your settings. And it's a very nice, worthy upgrade. Definitely check that out. Cool. All right, so and if you folks are a proud owner of the M3D, the very small and portable printer, definitely consider checking out Octoprint mm -hmm. and M3D FIO. Yep. It's a good, that's, that's sort of all you use now, right? Yep. OK, cool. All right, guys, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is how about the resin? Yeah, so for the Ember DLP SLA Ember. Yeah, they sent us over printer. all of the new CMYK plus W colors. <laughs> yeah, they have white as so well. So that's cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and white. Cool. So they, these are just bottles of, um, of, the, of the colored resin. Um, anything that's different about the clear resin other than colored? So it's a new formulation, I'm um, guessing the... Does it harden fast or anything like that? 
Uh, I haven't read into that, but okay. the one thing we were quickly noticed was it doesn't smell as bad as the transparent that was stuff. A big, <laughs> that was a big plus. The bottle design is a little bit of a different update. Yeah, they have like nice little... Uh, pouring um, spout. Yeah, a little pouring spout. The way that it's designed to it like catches onto your thumb when you're pouring in, so it's not slippery. Oh, it's the ergonomic bottle design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. So here's a nice little uh, funnel and uh, self-catching little spout there. So yeah, that's, the that's resin really, can drip really back handy. In. Very handy stuff. All right. As far as the colors by themselves are uh, go, they are pretty opaque, so they're not transparent like I thought it'd be. And here we're pouring in the uh, cyan color, which is like the blue. Yeah. And it's pretty dark. We have two LED panels on this, and it is it's pretty dark. dark. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty dark. It looks like black, but it's it's blue. It's like a dark navy blue. Mm -hmm. So one of the disadvantages of that is that you're not able to easily see the the um, the light passing through the resin. It's hard to, to catch monitor any it. fails. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 3D printed cover here, uh, instead of just pouring out, we have multiple trays now because we want to keep those trays um, handy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to do a lot of cleanup work or have to put everything back into a bottle. So there you go. Okay. just printed some covers so you can stack those up. Okay, dokey. And some leveling work here on the build head. And the test print that we're printing out was the dodecahedron. Yep. A new little. Uh, technique that XYZ Aiden. Yeah, I got inspired by Aiden's uh, tutorial uh, in 123D to make one. I just sort of make a pentagon and you fold it in a certain way with a certain uh, degree. A great way to do that. And um, I, I threw it in a uh, mesh mixer and I made a wireframe out of it. So using the pattern maker, the pattern make uh, function, so you can mm -hmm. make a nice little wireframe pattern out of it instead of it being completely solid. This took about two hours to print. Yep. And a uh, weird thing here is um, Tell us, tell us what, what happened here. <laughs> Going up here, yeah. So we had forgotten we had a print previously on the bed that we didn't take off, so. It's fused onto the part. We yeah. printed right on a part. <laughs> we forgot to take it off. These are little nuts that is for uh, the droney trophies. Mm -hmm. So uh, these, these connect the propellers. And connect the propeller head, the, the little props. And <laughs> kind of printed, printed over it. And amazingly, it didn't fail. Mm -hmm. It successfully printed. Yeah, so how tall are these? Like six millimeters tall? Uh, no, no, no. Three like millimeters, two or three. Two millimeters. Yeah. So, so when you were bed leveling, you, you, you were like, this is a little weird. I'm going to let it go. Mm -hmm. And this is just a good test that we didn't even know we were testing. Right? So, so what, two millimeters away from the bed and it still it's managed to print. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> so yeah, the, they released a really great video on their updates to you know the world of 3D printing and they were touting a 80% success rate, and we could totally attest to that. Yeah. Um, a lot of the prints, very you know, very few fails uh, with their updated default settings that they have. Yeah. Now, obviously, people were like, hey, this looks kind of messy, and it is. Um, this just reminds me of the day of refilling my own inkjet cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> so your tools and stuff, your combs and your, your containers, they might get stained, so you've got to have a lot of alcohol handy and just be ready to wipe everything down. Mm -hmm. So, like here, we got we got a little stain there. It comes off. It's not permanently stained so far. Yeah, with the transparent stuff, you would you know you couldn't get it. get it everywhere, but you couldn't tell until you actually touched it. It feel all tacky. This yeah. you could totally see. You definitely got to wipe down all your tools and put it inside the alcohol. Yeah. It does wipe away, but um, we haven't tested to see if we actually leave it on there. Will it harden and cure yeah. on there? And will the alcohol? bleed some of the color onto our clear prints. Did you show that yet? Uh, it's about to come up, okay. and it looks like only a tad bit, but that could have been resin that was just left on there. Mm. So yeah, you definitely want to clean all your tools. Um, <laughs> make sure you wear like an apron or something if you don't want to get it on your clothes. Yeah. And here we are removing the little nuts, and you can see that there might be a slight uh, tint of the blue on there. It, it looks pretty clear, but yeah, there might be a. If you it's maybe cool. you, if you leave, leave it longer, you know. But um, seems pretty, pretty clear. A little bit of tint, yeah. But you probably rub that off, yeah. Yeah. All right. So and there's the D20 or the T20, the dodecahedron. The dodecahedron. I take a look at the opacity for this. It's pretty dark, but when you hold it up against an LED light, it does shine through just a tad bit, just yeah. enough for making the little gems that I want to do for. Um, this Star Trek communicator over here that you got teased on earlier. Okay. Do we want to, is that the end of the video? Can I do overhead? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overhead. Time for the overhead. So take out the D20, or I keep calling it D20. <laughs> Dodeca. It's a Dodeca. Check out the Dodeca wireframe. Um, I think it's a one millimeter spoke. Mm -hmm. I think, something like that. And you can see the flat area here. So this was the uh, 
Oh, I did a plain cut. Yeah, I had to do a plain cut because uh, when you do uh, the pattern maker, it makes everything nice and smooth. So you're going to have a nice flat surface. This print with no supports. Mm -hmm. um, a teeny bit of an overhang issue. Can you pull that maybe? Oh, uh, one of them show where it's a slight droopage, right? Here, and it's surprising that it caught itself. Yeah, you can see that that spoke looks a little bit thicker oh, than the yeah. others. Um, it might not focus here, but it's okay. Let's try this. Let's try this. Okay. But it's a cool little shape. Um, in the background, we're printing a massive one. Oh yeah, if you can scoot <laughs> over, just, uh, it's not big enough yet. It's not big enough. I think I already threw away the failed print okay. of it. Okay. Yeah, we're. You, it's actually a different design that you're printing. It's yeah. one of these, right? Yeah, it's that. It's basically um, extruded and then tapered it and then just did a shell across all of the faces. And it makes this interesting looking design here. So it's not solid. Uh, I don't want to print a solid one. I just want to print like a yeah. sort of optimized for printing less material and just a cool looking structure. And a final one that we just got in yesterday as well. I didn't uh, have time to put it in the slide. We got their new high speed resin. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. So we could potentially print this in like, I don't know, two minutes, five minutes? What do you think? Uh, how, how much, what's the percentage? Like 24 times faster? Yeah, it's like 430 crazy? millimeters a second or something like that. 430 millimeters a second. Yeah. So this so thing doesn't, it doesn't stay, it just, it just continuously prints, right? If you guys are familiar with the Carbon 3D printer, where it just has, you know, just lifts up like in real time, and it's wow. printing that fast. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, so they did some uh, material tweaks, some yeah. software tweaks, and uh, they sent us over the resin to we, test it out. We would have printed it yesterday, but we're still waiting on our FDM printer to print the cover for the resin tray so we could just take that resin tray, get the new resin tray, and then mm -hmm. fill in some new resin. Yeah, so the Fusion 360 link that they had for their design files is, seems to be broken, so I had to design uh, my yeah, own. That's right. Now that took about half the day yesterday. <laughs> All right, well, that's the quick shop update. A lot of uh, new stuff we're going to do with uh, uh, SLA, DLP SLA, printing mm -hmm. with the Ember printer from Autodesk. Yeah. Okay. That should be fun. Oh, and we're going to mix colors. Durr. We're going to mix colors. To yeah. You can mix them and make some pretty interesting colors. I really want to cool. make like an Adabot blue or something. Okay. That's about it there. Um, Actually, continuing on with shop talk, the nice. material here that um, we're showing this on. This is actually a build plate, folks. So you guys remember zebra plates? that we have in the Adafruit shop. They're a little bit thick. They're supposed to be a replacement uh, for, for, for build tape and stuff. This is actually a thinner version of it. It's called a skin, and it has an adhesive uh, sticky backing to it. It's in, in, in industrial strength uh, 3M, it's a sticky backing, so you could put it on straight on your bed, say you have a metal bed or mm -hmm. a glass bed, and the benefits of this is that it lasts longer than blue tape and other uh, surfaces. Um, and this is uh, manufactured right here in West Palm Beach, actually, by Wayne, yep. who, who runs a print in Z. So thinner, and it's more cost effective. Yeah, if you guys so remember it's actually the um, formerly known as Ninja Plate. Yeah, the Ninja Plate, yeah, because the Ninja Flex, he changed the name to Print yeah. in Z, which is a good name. So it comes in black and white. We're just going to carry oh. all these uh, blacks. Probably just in black, yeah. Probably just in black. And if you can compare these, oh. uh, it might be a little bit difficult to tell between a build tack over here. Yeah, so this is a build tack which you might be familiar with. And if you use it before, you're familiar with the long, uh, the lifespan of these, it's not too long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get a couple prints. Yeah, you get, you get a good handful of prints. This one is thicker, and the zebra, uh, the zebra skin uh, has a longer lifespan. Mm -hmm. And it's got a more of a, of a smooth texture. texture to it, too. And I think you can sand it down, too. If you ever scuff it up, you can actually sand it down a bit. Um, so we're going to cut, carry it for a few printers in different sizes, M3D, of course. Mm -hmm. The Slash Forge, here. and this is the, uh, the, the Ultimaker, Ultimaker size. Yeah. size. So we're going to carry those. Our, our PO is already sent in. We'll be receiving them soon. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick these up, uh, they're going to be priced, I think, pretty pretty good. A lot cheaper, yeah. They're cheaper than PillTax. That's oh, good. good. Yeah. Very good price that we're getting on these. Link for the build plate, we're, we're working on that. It, this is just a, sh a, a preview of uh, what's to come, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Very, Very awesome. good. Oh, and it, 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 shout out to uh, Tom, Tom's video, Tom's uh, Sal Salamander. Definitely check that out, yeah. Um, check out his review. He did a shootout on comparing all types of build surfaces, and this was one of them. Mm -hmm. So check out, he did a very scientific uh, mm -hmm. test, which is pretty cool. Heated, non-heated, different materials. Yeah, I like this stuff. Good stuff. Another thing that Wayne has been working for us is some customized Pigments. blue teal colors. Yeah. 
So uh, we were like, it'd be cool if you could, um, if, if you had this color. And he's like, I can make that color. So he went ahead and made the color. So uh, we used to like this um, color from MakerBot ABS. It was called Acid Lake. Mm -hmm. And there are some other manufacturers that make it, but this is actually PLA PHA, which if you've heard of us talk about before, it's a lot stronger and more flexible than, P than regular PLA. It's not as rigid, it has flex to it, and you can sand it down nice. Um, so this is uh, just the BMO project we made about two years ago, and I, I, this is just a test print. Um, all of the parts, just about all the parts except these colored here bits, um, that's all the teal coloring. Um, our, our, our color temperature is a little bit off here. Let me see if I can make it, it better. a little warmer. Yeah. Uh, this one here. How's that? Is that better? A little too warm. A little too warm. Too much a little too hot. There we go. Something like that. And a little bit brighter. Why not? Yeah, so that's the BMO. Um, we're going to call it, I don't know, Adabot Blue or something. Yeah. But uh, that's, uh, we have it on order, I think, with the zebra plate. So we'll be getting that in a couple weeks or, or maybe a week or so. Yeah, really like the um, contrast of this color. It's nice saturated. Uh, the, it doesn't look exactly how it does in real life. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's more uh, bluey. It's not so bright. Yeah. It's not so, yeah, there you there go. go. Maybe that's a better color. Yeah. A little bit more truer to it. <laughs> I love this BMO. And yeah, we've uh, had a hard time trying to look this uh, color up, I think. Um, I think Kirby mentioned that. Yeah, Kirby e did say that it. the Esun has it. Uh, I think it's just PLA though. Yeah, it's PLA. PLA yeah. So mm -hmm. again, PLA PHA, so a little bit more stronger. Yeah, and it's more affordable. It's a little yes. bit cheaper, so yes. that's good. He's got some good, some good prices on his filament. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some new stuff, some zebra scans, and some new filament that we're gonna have in the shop very soon. So be on the lookout for that. And next week, we'll, we'll share with you guys um, if it's available or not, and you can get a discount on it. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to get some stuff now that we have in the shop, whatever's in there, you know, a lot of things are in stock, CMYK. Again, sign up for the Notify Me. Um, get your email on there for items you wish yeah. to get. Or check out our uh, worldwide list of distributors. Yeah, you might have a local shop, a micro center, or something close by that you didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So check that out. OK. Um, Next up, we're going to be taking a, a look at uh, this week's makes. Okay, community makes. Let's do that. I'm going to queue up here in the browser. So, um, yep, here's here's this week's community makes that we handpicked. Web. First one up, um, this person here, Lewis, printed out the, the face case. Remember the face case? This will probably work with the Pi 3. <laughs> so that's great. It does, yeah. Uh, it just looks like a cool print. He printed it in a... The smart core printer. I'm not sure. I've heard of that one. There's so many new printers out in the market. And that's this one is from, I guess, smart core. Printed it at uh, 20. It just looks really nice. So if you guys didn't know about this case, it's pretty. It's a pretty nice uh, generic, <laughs> mm -hmm. cute looking case. Uh, next up, um, JMT on Thingiverse made our camera LED ring, which is awesome. Um, he do 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 do. Uh, this is fun and simple print. Everything fit well. Had some issues with the battery top case from warping, so he used the heated bed. That's always a good thing. Um, he just, yeah, I think he made it a little bit larger, the little cap here. And we've been dying to remake this project so that, um, so that it uses the new NeoPixel rings that actually have the white LEDs so that it can do some nice color temperature, right? Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. that's one of the projects we'd like to revisit. And this was designed in 123D. Uh, we could we could do a lot more, um, a lot more parametric type stuff uh, in Fusion. Mm -hmm. So, pretty cool. We also put in a little DIY hack here is to add a, a little strap, Velcro strap, to make it adjustable for other lenses. So that's that's good. Very idea. handy. Yeah. Cool. Next up, nice job. Travel UV manicure lamp. This was Be this was one of Becky's ideas. Um, he he actually used a, a UV SMD panel that he had. So he used that as opposed to making his you know painstakingly putting all the LEDs in the base. So that's a cool option. He says he wants to use it for um, activating his, lighting up his UV active filament, which is an interesting thing about it. And they're all different types of components. So it's nice to see you can fit different stuff in there too. So good stuff. Well, I think we're going to re remake this project and make it a UV cure for the resin project. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Uh, shout out to Kirby, making stuff with, or stuff with Kirby on his YouTube channel. Um, Made the, the barn doors from, I think, last week? Was that last week's project? Yeah, yeah. Uh, two weeks, two ago. weeks ago. Yeah, something like that. OK. He made it look like barn doors with the color. It's cool that you can <laughs> just use different colors to make it. Very nice color scheme there. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks like, like that. Yeah. Printed it in eSun white ABS and um, I think eSun red ABS. It's good to print it in ABS. It's a lot more flexible and mm -hmm. durable. And uh, 200 microns on his low spot, low spot Taz. Looks good. Looks really clean. 
Good job, cool. Kirby. Thanks for sharing it. Um, okay, next up stuff. This is from Barb Makes Things. Be sure to check out Barb Make Things on YouTube. That's her YouTube channel. She made uh, part two of her twisted prism lamp using NeoPixels and a 3D printed um, sort of uh, grate thing here. So it's pretty cool. I think it's just paper to diffuse the light. And there's a proximity sensor in the bottom. So when you, when you go under the light, it, it changes the animation. Stuff. This is pretty cool for a festival, I think, that she's having. So I really like her video style. She goes through, um, it's like the De Rasta style. It's just like a nice build video. Um, fast forwarded mm -hmm. and um, a lot of little chirping sounds when she's singing. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it's just a nice overall uh, video of the process that she went through. Those are like the little holders and stuff. So nice. shout out to Barb. Be sure to check her out on YouTube and give her a like. And uh, yeah. Cool. Looks like she's doing friction welding there. Yeah, she did friction welding there, which is great. It's uh, a good technique. Okay, this one is pretty cool. Um, this is a, uh, uh, a perisaltic pump. Uh, this is a really interesting project. So uh, this person here made a, the reason why I used it is for. Turn the audio off. Yeah, it's, it's pretty low. I thought it, I muted it, but. Um, yeah, so basically it's, it's, uh, it's sort of making it easier to digest food for people that need sort of a, a food tube. So mm -hmm. um, he made this for his grandfather because uh, his, his grandmother, who's who's looking over him, uh, isn't able to, to, doesn't have like the, the, the force to like do this. So he made an Arduino based 3D printed uh, pump. That's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. So he just demos here how, how it goes through, the food goes through the tube and it like um, mushes it up a little bit more. Uh, very DIY, very good, um, good project. It's yeah. pretty cool. And uh, the whole build process is in here. So we have this linked on the blog, which will come out uh, tomorrow. So be sure to check that one out. So that's a really cool project. Uh, another one is from Chaos Core Tech. Check him out on YouTube as well. Uh, this is a really cool, he designed a, a Babam in uh, Fusion 360 and uh, optimized it in a, you know, he designed it in a way where it's flat so that there's no supports needed. And it's, it's a nice, he, he gave away the Fusion 360 file. It's on all sorts of different shared sites too, like Thingiverse and uh, Imagine. Uh, he printed it, uh, I forget on what printer, but he's using Cura to slice it. I'm not sure what printer it is, but he's got a time lapse going on. Let's check him out. He, he goes through this whole process. His wife helped out um, with the paint job. This looks phenomenal. Look at this paint job and the first processing techniques look really, really good. I really, really like this project. I think I want to print this out too. So it's pretty cool. Um, ba bomb. Very nice. Looks looks great. Um, be sure to check out Core uh, Chaos Core Tech on YouTube. Great channel, great content, and awesome design. Okay. This is just a simple one that caught our eye. We like Canon DSLRs, and these are uh, the LPE6 batteries, but with the little uh, holder. We could probably remix this design so that you can use it on, a, on something else, but mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. I yeah, really like cool. the little yeah. clips here. I didn't have time to design these, but mm -hmm. these look like they hold them on very well. Yeah, good stuff. And I think the last project we'll talk about, this is just a cool Call of Duty ray gun, uh, 3D printed. Um, all the details are here. I think it's using... Uh, Sounds and stuff too. Wish there was a video, but it looks great. So, wow. do you want a ray gun? Awesome. The post process good, work on good. this. Yeah, it's a good ray gun. Looks good. All right. And that was by Mr. Blizzard cool. here on Thinkiverse. All right. Well, that's all the community makes we wanted to share this week. There's a plenty more that's on the blog, so be sure to check those out. And mm -hmm. if you want a blog tip, uh, just what is it? Tips at eighty-four dot com is mm -hmm. the email to send your your stuff to. Yep. Either that or send us a. Uh, Message on Instagram or just tag us in the post for that. Sure. And Instagram's we'll a good way to do that too. All right, now we're going to do QA. Let's do QA here. Okay. Okay, we got some pre, um, pre loaded questions here. Yeah, so this one is from Black Cobra uh, on the Lair Belair, the part four with Pygro Zero. I think it'd be better if you have the power switch on another place or recess inwards a bit because it's easy to bump in your hands when it's in the current location. It's supposed to be more comfortable with people, uncomfortable with people with small hands because it might dig in the skin depending on how the console is being held. Um, I put it either above the action buttons poking out from the front so your hand only ever touches it to actually use it or recesses enough so that you can push it with your finger. It doesn't stick out far enough uh, to bother the user. Yeah, I, I took your advice and I, I recessed it and um, it's at the bottom center now which is a, a nice placement for it. And it's a lot closer, not a lot closer, but it's still closer to um, to the power boost. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Cool. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Next one is from Lucid Nightmare. 
Um, hey, Noel, I was wondering if you could use this rechargeable battery. It makes a great tilt stand if you uh, make a back panel for the Super Game Pie. Here's a link. Let me know if this is okay to use. Totally okay to use. Uh, it's a 10,000 million battery. That's a beast battery. Um, yeah, it's a, since it's 3.7 3 volts, it'll work just fine. Um, yeah, look at the dimensions on it, but you should be able to just easily adjust the size of the case. Yeah, nice one. It's cool. And looking forward to the Pi 3 version. <laughs> yep, me too. We got to get on that soon. Next one is from uh, Kern XMB uh, on the on the one of the Hangouts. Any any way I can uh, take a look at the slicer settings for NinjaFlex printing with M3D? I have one spool of NinjaFlex filament, and I haven't been able to print anything since my M3D continues to fail bonding the layers. We actually already um, commented on, on another comment, uh, replied to him on another comment. But so all our printing profiles are on our GitHub yeah. our repo. So check that out. Yeah, the NinjaFlex doesn't work on our M3D anymore. Yeah, so. Suppliers always change. It yeah. uh, looks like the bearings uh, are not pushing up against the gear tooth as much as it was in an older version. So um, yeah. they we got a, a replacement M3D in, and when we tested that again, it just didn't work. Just didn't it, work yeah. the, I guess the yeah the gap between that the okay. bear, the it can't grip onto it just enough. Exactly. Yeah, but their tough stuff absolutely works. Yeah, so. this is why they made tough stuff. They knew that they needed to make a, a specific. Um, uh, elastomer mm -hmm. material. So either check out that or the upcoming cheetah filament. Yeah, the cheetah. That will that you have tested with it. We have mm -hmm. we've done videos on that before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's some options there to get NinjaFlex type stuff. Uh, here's one from John Paul Hopman. I think it would flip the screen so the buttons were on top. Then you can use the adapter to bring the uh, the HDMI port uh, out for out on the top, playing on a larger screen. For the battery, if you could wire. Um, Smaller batteries in parallel? Could you? Uh, with with each one can be tuckered in. You know, I'm going for more of a, a simple approach to it. Um, you could do it. That would be a good remix, I think. But um, yeah, I guess with the adapter, you you might be able to get the HDMI out here because the HDMI kind of cuts out right here. That's about where it is. So if you add the adapter, it might make some chunk to it. Um, it's it's definitely a possibility. But I'm going to leave that out. I really want the build cost of this to be as low as possible. So I'm going to opt out of that one and. Uh, the last thing is, can you put smaller batteries in? I want to play the safe route here. I don't want uh, the idea of uh, cutting and splicing batteries and wiring them in parallel. You could do it if you know what you're doing, but since this is going to be made by a lot of uh, newcomers to electronics, we want to have it very, very simple. We don't want to be dangerous at all, so yeah. we're going to opt out on that one too. But it's going to be, of course, available to modify. I, I really like when people make it better than the original, so this is just one, going to be one of those projects where it's a great starting point. Work on top of it. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Always encourage everybody to thanks for this add their own updates to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Next one is from Danish uh, Craig Orium TV. Uh, I'm just thinking: Is there a way to add stereo speakers to this? Um, if, if I use the same components as you did, so I'll be able to get music and sound from the games that I might play on it. Yeah. I think the easiest thing to do is to use this USB. Um, audio adapter here. So this is this works with Linux, this works with Raspberry Pi, we have it in the shop. And it has actually two audio inputs. It has an audio out and an audio in for a microphone. So what you could do is you can wire this out into one of the, our amplifiers mm -hmm. and then wire a speaker to the amplifier and then wire the amplifier to the power boost. A lot of extra steps. Yeah. Again, I'm going to opt out on that. I want it to be as cheap as possible. And you might, look how chunky this is. You could probably break the casing out and maybe make it a headphone jack. There's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. there. So. I'm going to allow that one to be one of the remixes for people. So this is just one option. I think this is the easiest option. So. Um, <coughs> and of course, it's going to take up your USB. So you can, again, yeah. you need more parts. You need an adapter, or you need mm -hmm. maybe a hub if you want to have Wi-Fi and the audio. Yep. There's a lot of stuff there. So I, again, there's always I'm, pros and cons. There too. is. <laughs> and um, this is one of those things that I think I'm going to leave it up to the community to add their, to add their own audio mm -hmm. solutions. But it's a good one. Thank you for that one. Next one is on another layer by layer. And let me click on that. Uh, when will this be available for, for doing? I've just finished the Pi Grill 2 and I love it as a first project. Now I'm hooked and I want to do one, one of these as well. Yeah, uh, give us another month or two. It, it, it takes time to source all the parts, get everything. We still don't have the Pi 2 parts and like yeah. as a kit, so. And we're also low on Pi Zero parts as well. Yeah, Pi <laughs> Zeros are hard to get, man, so. The Pi Foundation is working hard to get those made, but mm -hmm. um, it's month hard to two. say. Yeah, month it's hard two. to say, but maybe a month or two. But yeah, I appreciate. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good first time. That's why we like this one a lot. Thank you, Danny. Next one is uh, from Design Andrew 
on 123D to Fusion 360, how did you find the move? For me, as a total hobbyist, 1, 2, 3 design seems much easier, and I love the 3D view as opposed to the asymmetric view of Fusion. You could probably change it, but I, I couldn't figure out how. Certainly, 360 seems to have more features, but I have not come up against the wall yet with 1, 2, 3D. Yeah. Yeah, so the first part of that question is, where is that uh, perspective to orthographic view? And it's right by the view cube. Yeah. It's a little triangle. and just click on that, <laughs> drop down, and you can switch between those. The move was relatively easy because of the complexity of the projects. Um, you don't have the ability to turn off layers. So a lot of our projects are cases. So yeah. as soon as you make the case, um, you have the electronics and then you have the case. And then you want to click or select on, you know, to move those components around. That case is an obstacle now. So even, you know, yeah. putting a transparent material only goes so far. Um, there's no way to really turn materials off inside of 123D or objects off. Um, there's no way to label them. Yeah. Imagine like working in Photoshop with no layers, not being able to name anything. Everything doesn't have a nodal view, which yeah. means that there's no um, like a, a, an object to represent what your 3D uh, geometry is. And that was the biggest, uh, I guess, the easiest thing that made us move over. Yeah, and then the timeline. It's a massive savior. So every feature that yes. you do, every extrude, every fillet, you can always go back to it. You can move them around, and you can modify your uh, your values after the fact. That's yeah, a huge, so huge time saver. Right near the end of when you're trying to get your fittings right, um, imagine being able to edit the the feature that you made all the way back to the beginning before you started the box. Yeah. So that's just something we can do using 123D. We would have to copy or make multiple copies of objects yeah. just in case we had to go back and then we'd have to move it back into the uh, position that we that we had made for all the components. So that was just a major time suck there. Um, yep. So um, I'm surprised you haven't come up against the wall yet. No, I mean, it wants, it's good for like one single part. But as soon as you have so many solids, as you were saying, you really want to have a way to manage them. Yeah. And it's, it's just Fusion 360 is, 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 a, is a very nice upgrade. Mm -hmm. And since we're always learning, uh, luckily, now that we're moving on to doing milling, we're yeah. already using a Fusion program that can do CAM yeah. uh, to build all the tool paths for that. Exactly. So I would look Good at move. future, yeah, take future a look proving at it, yourself. You know? yeah. yeah, take a look and uh, try it out. Uh, it's always a little bit of a, it's a little bit scary to, to use something else. This is a tiny bit different, but it's a very common feature set, so mm -hmm. good stuff. Okay, hopefully that answers. That's a nice long answer. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Andrew. Uh, next one is from Technoid Production on the Pi Zero Part Three. Uh, is it possible to download the models for the Pi Zero, the Pi TT, and the Power Boost, etc.? Yeah, we're looking for a better way to to get these out to you guys because. Um, Right now, you have to you can you can share individual components, uh, but I, I, it's a little bit of a challenge to share like a folder, I think, because then I have to invite you, and then I'm going to have this long list of emails of people. <coughs> I'd rather have a public folder or something. So we're gonna we're we're trying to figure out a, a good way to do this, uh, since everything is on the cloud. So uh, bear with us, and we'll we'll try to <laughs> we'll try to get a better way to do it. Because with one two three, it's easier to just have one two three dx files. And then put a GitHub uh, repo up for that. It's a little bit more difficult this way. So there you go. Okay. I think that's it. And we can. Oh nope. No, no there's more. still more. There's a nine out of fifteen here. Ah. Uh, how do you configure the buttons for the Pi Girl? We're using um, a script that uh, Phil B wrote. It's called uh, Adafruit Retro Ga Retro Game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Adafruit Retro Game. And um, you just check the Pi Girl uh, a guide. It tells you how to modify, what to modify, how to install it. Um, and uh, the little table and the available uh, uh, available GPIOs, keys, yeah. yeah, and available GPIOs that you can use. So that's a great place to start um, the Pi Girl um, guide and the running OpenGL on Adafruit Pi TFT um, tutorial that has recently been updated. So check that out, and that'll give you a full uh, thing about how to do it. Okay, next one is how to uh, yeah on the polishing copper fill stuff. Is this stuff conductive? Maybe you could electrocute it afterwards. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah, so I, we've had this a couple of times. Uh, you can't, uh, it's not conductive filament. We actually, we have conductive filament, but the copper, the copper particles in there isn't enough to make it conductive. Yeah, there's uh, the PLA uh, material in between the copper parts, so mm -hmm. it's not enough to make it conductive. Yeah. But we do have conductive filament, and we've done a video on that, so check that one out. If you yeah, and electroplating. Uh, electro 
Um, after you've tumbled it, it looks very shiny, so there's yeah. really no reason to add you more could, to but, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you could, yeah. Definitely should be able to. Okay. Thank you for that one, Brendan. Next one is from Chad on Pi Girl Zero Part 2. When will the Pi Girl 2 kids be inside? Sign up for the, <laughs> the, the email. Sign Sign up for the notifications so you can get an email when uh, it is back in stock. So we really don't know. Yeah. Stuff with suppliers and stuff and shipping. Yeah, we have a list of what all the parts are. So again, if you could check the, the distributors, um, maybe yes. they have. Maybe you have a local distributor in your mm -hmm. area. So that's always an option. On the three pin to like button from Maxwell, uh, why not just use discrete logic counters? That's a good uh, question. Um, I guess you could. This is just sort of an idea. Um, you know, here's here's an enclosure. Here's a, here's some code for the trinket. Tony opted in for the trinket because it's relatively affordable. It's seven bucks. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good way to do it. So um, you could do it either way. I think. Yeah, totally up to you to modify the case for that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Next one. This is a good one on Astro Print. How many printers can you connect to one Raspberry Pi, or do you need individual one printer for one Pi? That's pretty much how it is. So we have several <coughs> Pis here. Uh, the Pi's are getting cheaper now. The B Plus is, I think, like 20 bucks or so, maybe cheaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Pi Zero is five bucks if you can get one. So, yeah, that's yeah, just go. one Pi, one, one, uh, one instance of uh, mm -hmm. uh, either OctoPrint or AstroPrint. And maybe future versions of uh, OctoPrint uh, will have multiple uh, printer support. But as of now, yeah, it's with just the Pi Three, I can imagine the core taking advantage of the cores. Yeah. All right, uh, next one is from uh, Zip uh, Z Pilzer. Uh, why not make the smaller lipos and connect them in parallel? Oh, that's like the similar pro yeah, similar question. Make it flatter so you can fit them all over. Yeah, again, I just want to make it really simple for folks, and I want to have a big, beefy battery so that folks can play on it. Mm -hmm. It's not that chunky, so yeah. I think it works pretty again, well. Again, you are free to totally do that on your own. Yeah, you can make it thinner. Awesome. Next one is a jury. Uh, my outside diameter is not consistent. How do I fix that on the Philobot? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why... Um, uh, we didn't follow through making DIY filament is because you, you really have some, you need some extra, you need the spool winder, you need the right conditions in order to get a really nice consistent diameter. And that's why, uh, you know, folks that manufacture filament, they, they, have their, they have a whole operation going on. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a little bit difficult. I, I would suggest maybe checking, t asking uh, Philabot on, on, um, on Twitter or their support forms if they have them. Uh, yeah, they had a new version that came out actually, so maybe it's able hardware, to do yeah. the, um, maybe the nozzles are more optimized for guaranteeing more consistent diameter, but you didn't say if it was smaller or wider. Um, yeah. For us, it was coming out a little bit too smaller, so I drilled out the nozzle. Oh, and wow. And that, uh, the consistency uh, went up after that. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's an option. Yep. Cool. That is all the questions this week. Thank you guys so much for uh, posting Actually, up your questions. there's a couple of questions uh, here in the chat room. Okay, live. this is what we can do with live, huh? Yeah, so Carlos A is asking, would the BMO act as a Tamaguchi or does it just change faces? No, it just changes faces, but I'm sure somebody could write some code to make it work as a Tamaguchi and actually make it do stuff. That'd be yeah. cool. Right now, it's just cycling through a, a little, little face animation. Little face yeah. animation. Definitely yeah. check it's out. A cool idea. I like it. Check learn.adafruit.com if you want to check out the code and the build for yeah. this. Yeah, somebody wrote a cool HTML5 widget where you click these little dots and then you can you create draw your, your own, own face. Anime. You draw right. your own graphics on it. It's pretty cute. Cool. Yeah. Another okay. question. Q and A live edition. Any way to get the buzzing off the Pocket Pie Girl audio? Can't find a solution. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's mainly because the battery. Position of the battery. The you know? position of the battery is right over uh, the the Pi. So um, there's there's some solutions out there. I think if you look on the Thingiverse page, somebody made it so you can mute it and uh, figured out a better way. I think somebody actually repositioned the battery too, but that might be on the Pie Girl too. Yeah. Vorp is asking, is there a set time that we start the show each broadcast? Like to catch it from the beginning? Uh, it's going to be on an archive, but yeah, we, we just wanted to do a live one this week and, and try that out, and um, it just happened to be 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. So do uh, you think we'll do this tomorrow or next week at 11 a.m.? This worked out pretty well, yeah. yeah. So we might start doing it uh, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. We might. Yeah, so, so well, the reason we switched to recording was uh, my kid... You know, turn two, and this once cool. <laughs> once children, you know, get that age, they are a little bit crazy and wild and yeah. very loud. Well, uh, <laughs> so right now, yeah, he's in daycare right now. 
Cool. So we're like, oh, let's go ahead. And it's only Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, or Friday. So right, right on 3D Thursday is when he's home. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no way we could record that. Yeah. So we've been recording like at nights uh, when he's asleep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, another one is... Is that all the time? We're doing really good on time. 45 minutes so far, it says. My 3D printer is broken, says Nightmare Fox. Uh, what's wrong with it? Um, yeah, check out. Printers break all the time. Not all the time. <laughs> it's just it's, they, they can. Whether it be when like user error or like, you know, the like earlier for this, um, the it film that fell off the spool. <laughs> yeah, and it was because it's sort of like a DIY, like mm -hmm. I'm gonna a spool put holder, a, yeah. I'm gonna put a, a screwdriver to hold it into place. It'll totally hold into place, mm -hmm. you know. Enough oscillations and your thing falls off, so. Yeah, I, I, would, ch I would check out, uh, I don't know, some forums for that particular model of printer. They probably have a community that that's already has solutions for you, so I would check that out. Always do that. All right, I think that's going to be it for the questions. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us in this live edition. I appreciate you guys hanging out in the chat. Very, very cool. Thank you guys again. This is going to be up, of course, to rewatch on YouTube. And so, don't um, miss the project video that's going to be released tomorrow. It's actually a 360 shop tour. Shop tour, yeah. So you can see the yeah. whole so get most on of the house. Yeah. YouTube desktop or if your phone, which your smartphone thing has mm -hmm. it. Yeah, or the probably. Google Cardboard or whatever. Sure, yeah. Check it out. And, uh, Just got an email from Jessica. This, the code is now active for today, CMYK. So it's good till, I think, 8 p.m. because that's when um, Phil's going to change it. <laughs> Later tonight is... No, I think uh, they put multiple codes on. Oh, yeah. okay. That's cool. Later tonight is... Uh, this is like show day, man. Wednesday's like the show day now. So now we're going to have back-to-back -back shows here. Uh, <laughs> Later tonight, 7... 30 p.m. We'll be there. Come check us out. Say hi. Show off your 3D print project, your electronics project, makerspace, hackerspace, whatever. Yeah, retro gear. And then uh, Ask Engineers shortly after that at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Another coupon code. And uh, Arduino, new products, Raspberry Pi. Top secret products. Top secret on. stuff. A lot of, lot of cool uh, tidbits there, too. So check that out. Tony D's killing it. I think he does like two a week now mm -hmm. on Saturdays and Mondays, I think. Yep. Oh, no, Fridays and Mondays, something like that? Yeah, I think Friday is like the easy episode one where he like does a little review or like um, checking out what games yeah. run on RetroPie. Yeah, it's just a good time. And then Mondays is when he does like a deep dive of code. Yeah, So definitely Concepts. check that out, yeah. Cool. Well, um, that's on Twitch live, and then it's, it's uh, posted up as an archive on YouTube. So be sure to uh, subscribe to Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Adafruit. Mm -hmm. Get that. And then Lady Ada... Every other day, it seems like. It's on many, many different places. Periscope, Meerkat. Hug VR if you want to see VR. 360. Uh, YouTube and, of course, Twitch. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Uh, we didn't get a slide of Colin Cunningham's brand new show, Pseudo yeah, Random. Yeah, Pseudo Random is out. awesome. Very, very awesome. Very fun. Looking at old school uh, PCBs, how they were hand drawn. Yeah, it was so cool to see yeah. the organic uh, traces and stuff. I never thought of that. So, yeah, wow. looks so I'm cool. inspired with the. I want to do some like uh, some organic stuff now that we're getting the other mill, so that's very mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, for people just tuning in, uh, we're gonna try to start this at 11 a.m. every Wednesday now. Yep. And uh, just to recap on the show. Yeah. What? Which one? Uh, this. This oh, show. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, what guys. What did we go over? What did we go over today on the show? We talked about C M Y K. Uh, resins that we got from Autodesk. We're going to be testing those out. Yeah, I talked about buttons, rub, uh, testing out rubber switch buttons, rubber, <laughs> rubber buttons for the PyGirl and, and other PyGirl type projects. We talked about the Octoprint update, the 1.2.10 update, the yep. M3D FIO update. New products. Talked about the uh, all new zebra skins that we're going to be getting in the shop. So we're yep. going to be getting these for the Ultimaker, Flashforge, and the M3D. Yeah. And again, the, the uh, skins are a little bit more thicker than the uh, build tack. Yep, it and has long lasting, smoother. cheaper, faster, cheaper, stronger. faster. <laughs> the adhesive on the back, uh, Wayne is recommending that you put blue tape on the bottom before you stick these onto your plate. Yeah, we'll talk more about that too. Yeah, we talked about the uh, blue teal color that we're also going to be getting in from Wayne. PLA, PHA. Mm -hmm, so nice and strong. And we talked about this week's community makes. Yep, check those out. It'll be linked uh, later. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. That's going to be it from us. And remember to uh, tune in later tonight. 
uh, for the most shows. Oh yeah, we also sneak peek of this. Ooh, what is that? Is it, oh, it flips open. Hello. See you guys next week. We'll see you guys later. Thank you guys. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.